Hello there, and we are back with our power supply. Um, you've seen this before, I'm going to put it to the side for a while now, because I will add an amp meter or a current meter, and I have found this little kit on Banggood again. Uh, it's around 4 euro or something like that, so it's not that expensive. Uh, this PCB and front panel mount, so you're going to end up with this unit when you finish for mounting through front or something. I will see how I put this together later. And uh, yeah, just look at the parts to begin with. Uh, it's based around the 7107. That's a pre-made chip, which does all the hard work. And you're gonna look at the schematics. Um, normal components, a bunch of resistors, uh, a choke or inductor. Uh, Precision or multi-turn potentiometer to set some values, a transistor, voltage regulator, and the you might call it the main attraction. Uh, a large resistor, but it's a very low value. This is the chunt for measuring the current when you can dis discuss the theory a bit about this later. And we can take a small look at the schematics. I put a link down below to the kit, and there's also this manual if you want to download it and um, Gets loose. Get a screwdriver. The main thing is the 7107, nothing strange, and the four digit displays. Here's where I choose where I'm going to put the decimal point, and nothing strange about that. 5 volt input. This device needs a 5 volt supply to work. It cannot take its voltage from what it's measuring because things will be wrong. Let's talk about a bit later. And here are the measuring point. R5 is our power resistor so all the current we are measuring going through this part of a circuit and out again so this is the input uh, and this chip it needs a minus 5 volts so over here we have a negative voltage pump we have a transistor is probably fed with some type of square wave so two diodes two capacitors and charging discharging to get a negative voltage and then we have a center diode 5 volt 1 which means we're gonna clamp this voltage to minus 5 volt then yeah so check when you if you're gonna build this one you have three normal diodes 41 48 and then you have one center diode so you do not confuse them over on this side we have a voltage regulator some resistors and the multi-turn this is uh, a voltage reference we are going to set this to, I think it was 100 millivolts, so we're going to check that we put it together. So, I'm just going to build this one. Uh, anything more I have to think about? Yeah, there's one more thing. It's a quite compact PCB, which gives us a problem with this socket. Because the socket goes on one side, and the numbers on one of this LCD, 7GD displays goes on the other side. And the problem is that they are going a bit it on top of each other which means we can't solder below here so we need to take this one apart I might just do it right now on each side oh. like this and maybe I can do the build in one nice time lapse destroy it so what you do when you well you mount the components as usual start with the small resistors and diodes and works your way up you're gonna have a pcb with the eq kit text towards you and you're gonna mount this pins first after that you're gonna feed in all uh, the four numbers of course as you can see we're gonna yeah, i'm gonna find the holes for this one now so you do that one first this is a second come on why is your hard to get through anyway as you can see let's go through and then you take a second here peer and solar it should be working maybe you could do everything in one part I don't know but it's quite hard to solder below other things so that's we're gonna do it so heat it up solder and let's get to work
and we have some type of numbers. Uh, there's one segment that doesn't work. I'm going to check that later and we'll maybe do it during this. But everything is mounted and I'm just going to remove this for time. And now I'm going to check the voltages so we do not do anything wrong. And I'm feeding this from my other power supply. Just 5 volts into the power supply for the current meter. And we're going to check... First of all, see you can see my meter too. Oh, fantastic. Stay. Not too big. All right. Uh, let's see. Pin 21 is ground. That's one up here. And pin number one should be 5 volt. Yeah, you have 5 volt in. And then we need to find the minus 5 volt, that's number 26, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. That's minus 5 volts, good. And now we have our calibration voltage and that's between 35 and 36. So that's 40, 39, 38, 37, 36 and 35, let's see. What do we have without short circuiting and anything? We have, have 105 and it should be 100. I'm going to trim the multi turn potentiometer. I'm going to move the camera a bit down here until we end up at. If we get any change. Here we get. Let's chase. Ooh. I need more hands. 30 for 9. Oh, it's very sensitive. 100 millivolts. Good. Let's remove that. And it shows here. Now I've got to troubleshoot the segment here and connect it up to my other power supply and connect everything together. time to put it together. Uh, here's the display, all fixed up. Um, it was a bad soldering which was the, the, why I didn't have uh, all the segments working. So I did a bit of a lazy solution. I just took a bit of wire and ran from the output leg down to the pin of the uh, uh, segment display. So I got everything working. Sometimes you do the laser solution or I had to desolder everything to uh, get it working. Uh, I think I've either missed the one solder joint or did a bad soldering. But that's that. Let's talk how we're going to connect this now. Just this version now for me here. Uh, you have seen my early videos know that I have switched out the voltage regulator here. Which in the original is a 24 volt for a fan. That's now a 5 volt regulator that goes out here to my little green LED, which is on when the power is on. And that's very good because this current display needs 5 volt to work. So here's, I'm going to pick out 5 volt here. And then we have the output of the power supply. I'm going to take this as our lead voltage display. We're going to talk a bit about a bit more about that soon. I'm going to take the positive lead in to positive in and then I'm going to take another red lead for minus out that's my new positive lead so let's do some drawings and see if I can do this correct so sorry for my bad drawing capabilities uh, here is my power supply unit PSU that's the power supply unit and we have a positive and a negative output. So right now it's going out and um, this is my plan. Here I'm going to put plus and minus of my current meter. Current. That's a new one here. Out. And here is my load. Load. And then back to minus. So, current is measured in series with the load, which also means that all the current 
is flowing through your current meter. So you have to remember this here module, and this has a maximum of 2 amps. And if you have built this power supply original, it's built to deliver up to 3 amps. And if you put out 3 amps here, you're gonna burn this current meter to death and get the beautiful magic smoke. So remember, at most current meter, or basically all, you are pushing all the current through the meter. And inside the meter, just to discuss it, is basically current comes in, and inside somewhere you have the low value resistor. It's a high power but a low value resistor. It's positive and out again. And then you have some kind of electronics, an IC and something, that are measuring the voltage drop across the resistor. Because if you have no current, there's no voltage and so on. So you have a linear connection between voltage and current here. And that's negative out. So you have to remember, all the current is flowing, flowing through this resistor and can burn up stuff for you. So, and there's also another thing. My configuration is going to be that my voltmeter is connected here. And it's in parallel to the load and to the PSU. Uh, there's a very small voltage drop across this current meter. So if you really should do it correctly, you should measure voltage out here. But there's a small problem here. It's not really a problem for me, but just to... There's a thing you sometimes forget that you have voltage drops in the system. The power supply tries to keep this point here at a certain voltage, so it's say 5 volt. And then you have a small voltage drop across here, which might mean that you have a bit less than 5 volt over here. Normally no problem, but just to think of. So you have to decide if you want your voltmeter here or here, or if you want to rebuild your power supply, because inside the power supply, you have this bis transistor, and on the output of that, you have a sense wire that goes by to the op amps to do everything. If you want to, you can take this and pull it out into the circuit to get everything correct. But, well, for me and for normal usage, it's no problem. So keep it simple. Put your voltmeter in parallel and your current meter in series. But check the max amps or current that your current meter can handle so you don't burn it up. So I try to put things together now and see where we end up. And I have uh, set up not as I wanted it to be because I made a small mistake. Mostly in my brain as usual. So let's look at it. This setup I have right now, you can see the PSU, power supply unit, as earlier, the current limiter, and my little load that are three 150 ohm resistors in parallel, so they are 50 ohm. And well, as I showed you earlier, this is my setup right now uh, my power supply unit, PSU, sorry for my bad drawings, uh, positive goes out, there's the yellow cable here, and it goes to my amp meter with my numbers, and then it goes to my load, which are right now three resistors in parallel, and then back to minus. And on the amp meter, this is marked plus, and this is marked minus. Nothing strange. And then I have my other power supply here, feeding the 5 volt power supply so this is working so just don't look at this setup now i'm going to talk about my mistake in a while so i'm now using as you can see i have turned the voltage knob all the way to maximum voltage and my red led is on for my current limitation i have set it for 100 milliamps and that's 5 volts so that's basically correct because free 150 ohm resistors in parallel are 50 ohms and 5 volts 50 ohm should be 100 milliamps or 0.1 volt amps sorry and we can test it let's see where are my little plier we have 
06 volt and 0.99. If we remove our resistor, the current stays the same because the current limitation is working and voltage goes up because you have to have a higher voltage to drive the same current here. And now if we remove one more resistor, we should get, yeah, 15 volts. 15 volts, 150 ohms, 0.1, so it's working. And we can also do a bit the other way around, turn down the voltage and max out our current limitation. And now we can run the voltage, I think all the way up to 21.1 volt and we get 0.412 milliamps or 0.4 amps. So this is working nicely. I just gonna turn it down because I wanna heat up these too much. Now to my little mistake. I wanted to use the 5 volts regulator in here and I did a small blunder or I didn't think about one thing. So let's look at that. Uh, if we take a look at the schematics, I should have seen it here. This is the input for the current measuring, positive and negative. Oh, positive here and minus here is this one. And you see this little marking here. That's a ground symbol. That means at this point is connected down to this point and all the other points and mainly this. Uh, this is the 5 volt input, this two. So the problem is my version here, to get it back to my beautiful drawing, uh, this ground symbol is over here. So what happened basically is that I made a connection from this point into the power supply to the negative rail inside because the 5 volt regulator here is connected to the negative rail. So the current was flowing this way and just uh, ramping up and not through the load. So I have to feed it from the outside. Now there's one small solution as people sometimes talk about. You can measure current on the positive side or the negative side. Drawing again, plus, minus some type of load and we have the connections and connections. You can put your current meter on the positive side because the current is flowing around. It's the same current in the whole circuit always. You can put it up here on the positive side or down here on the negative side. So in theory, my next theory, I plan to put this on the negative side because then my ground would be down here and that shouldn't be that be much of a problem. But then I run into another problem because there's one more current sensing circuit in the system and that's the current limitation. Inside the power supply there's a resistor where the power supply is measuring the current that's running through the circuit. So if I put this amp meter out here and connect it I end up bypassing this resistor, which means I turn the current limitation off and I will just get maximum current all the time, just voltage regulation, and that is not what I want. So I will might give it some time and might find some other solution. I think I end up taking AC voltage from the transformer we can secondary rectify a bridge or something and a 5 volt regulator, five volt regulator to get the 5 volt for this one because I will have problems using it from inside the power supply because they are connected in some way so I get voltage or currents running the wrong way so that's that. But this little current limiter, a current meter works really nice for 4, four or 5 euro or something like that and it's supposed to put it in the front system or something like that so I have to see how I now we put all this together and yeah, I'm quite pleased even if it ended, it didn't end up as I wanted it to be, but that's half the fun as always me. I want trouble and want troubleshooting and learning things. So that's the end of this video. Good luck if you want to build this. Maybe you'll learn a bit about current measuring and how you put it in your circuit. So good luck and see you later.